Hear that ringing? Yeah, it's Marshall Week. Welcome to the Bobcat Sports Showcase. I'm Grant Burkhart. Do you know just how good some of your Bobcat teams have been recently? Well, if you don't, that's why we're here. We'll tell you all about it. But before we do that, let's take a look back at Ohio football's win over Gardner-Webb, also the 100th head coaching win, and the career of Ohio's Frank Solich. This is the Bobcat Rewind. The Bobcat Rewind. Towards the south end zone, ball at the five. Scoreless game, 128 to go, quarter one. Backside rush, Tettleton got decked, lost the football. It's picked up by Gardner-Webb at the 18-yard line. Tettleton is down on the field at the 15. Very slow to get up. Tettleton lost the ball, picked up by the Bulldogs. Big rush on from Carl Jones, throwing right. The ball is deflected and intercepted. Ohio got it on the ricochet. Nathan Carpenter got it on the third bounce. Foster and Dunlop wide to the left, wide to the right. Brazil, second down and eight. Ball thrown to the right side. Jump ball caught. LeBron Brazil touchdown Ohio. Six nothing Ohio. 10:57 to go. Quarter two. Snap back. Placement down by Hershey. The kick has a lot of leg, and he got it. First and ten. Ball thrown. Interception. Delaney Wesley's going to score a touchdown. Six for the Cats. The pass was thrown to the right flat on first and 10. Wosley stepped in there, jumped the route, caught it, and strolled for six. 16-0 Ohio. Tettleton's out of the shotgun, Harden on his right hip. First and 10, ball at the 14. Tettleton lost it left side. Backpedaling, Riley Dunlop. Yes, he caught the ball. Back boundary, six for the cat. And Ohio's on top, 23-0. Oh, that was so sexy from Tettleton to Riley. Six for the Cats. Frank Solich won his 100th contest tonight. This in his seventh year as Ohio's head coach and Ohio University congratulates him and is very lucky to have him here to be sure. The Cats are 2-0, Ohio wins it 30-3. I feel good about it, but um, you know, like I mentioned before, just so many people involved in being able to, to win football games. And I've been you know, with two organizations uh, that have given great support uh, during my time um, at the helm, and and so when you when you have that uh, kind of support and you have good staff and good coaches around you, good players around you, you know the, the wins can come. So the Cats are two and zero and have won five straight at home going into this weekend's battle for the belt with Marshall. And that win over Gardner Webb, Ohio senior linebacker Noah Keller set out with a bum hamstring, but stepping in for him was another senior linebacker, Eric Benjamin. And as Matt Archibald will tell you, Benjamin has trouble stepping anywhere. But when it's game day, it's full speed ahead for the senior. Sunday, it's my knee looks like a softball. Eric Benjamin's right knee looks like a softball after game days because he is playing through a major injury. His right knee has a torn ACL, MCL, PCL, and meniscus, four crucial ligaments that support your lower body. Playing without the ACL really does, uh, you know, hurt a little bit, but I just go through it. I've, I've had it kind of gotten used to the pain, and that's game days. It's, you know, it's just another day, and my adrenaline's rush, and I'm, I'm fine. Most people could not run and cut and turn without an ACL ligament. In Eric's case, he really can't do it without his brace. He's wearing a brace, a custom fit knee brace. No matter how much pain Eric can endure, his season is millimeters from an abrupt end. If the MCL goes, if he were to injure that again, he's done. If the MCL and the ACL are gone, that what you're looking at is a traumatic injury would be a knee dislocation. Most of the times you can find Eric Benjamin right here in this contraption in the athletic training room. After four days of ice, rest, and repeat, his knee is finally ready to go for practice. Playing through the pain is impressive to most, but his teammates say, You know, that's just Benjamin. You know, he's, I mean, he played with a bad knee. And nobody knew what, what was wrong with him. So that's just the kind of guy he is. When you play football, you're never really fully healthy. He's tough, you know, he's one of those guys that you want on your team that'll play through anything. He's definitely a tough kid, that's for sure. You can't, you can't take that away from him. Uh, hopefully we can, you know, keep him healthy this whole season and hopefully that, you know, doesn't come back to bite him, I don't think. You know, he's a strong kid and, you know, a tough player. And that definitely shows by, you know, what he's doing. I'm just proud of how he's able to keep himself on the football field. Not a lot of guys can do that. Now, and there's very, very few that are playing with his kind of injury. Most guys would, would just have surgery and, and uh, get it done. The question remains, 
Why would anyone put themselves through that kind of pain? For two or three years, he was a walk-on here. He was a guy that played scout team, dreamed of getting the chance to play on a, on a Saturday night, and uh, he earned that right last year, and, and, and not many of those guys get a chance to do that. And he really uh, relishes that moment, so um, we're happy that he can continue to do that, and I'll, I'll be happy when we get his knee fixed at the end of the season. In last year's Mid-American Conference Volleyball Tournament, Ohio became the first team since 2001 to not lose a single set along the way to the third straight conference championship. Ryan Tice has been the head coach for all three of those here at Ohio. But what's behind the shirt and tie on the sidelines? We have the all-access pass inside the third year head coach's life to find out. Despite all of his success, coaching was something Ryan Tice sort of stumbled upon. Um, I was a setter and it was just kind of a natural role for me to take over uh, more and more responsibility in the team. So I kind of became player coach at that point. I started helping the women's team my senior year because I found out you could basically become a professional coach. Uh, I didn't even think of that until I was probably a junior in college. Through his experiences, Tice has seen every aspect of the game. You really have to have experience in all of it, I think, to be a good head coach. And so in my assistant coaching roles, I was an assistant for a decade. Uh, I worked in every different area of a volleyball program and feel I had a pretty good handle and was ready to be a head coach. And when he came to Athens, he was put right to work. My first week on the job was going to Katie Post's house. She had signed an NLI to come here and I had to convince her to, to still come. And to see her as a you know 17 year old, uh, sit down with her and her dad and convince her to still come here to see her as somebody who's about to graduate and play professional volleyball, uh, you know, that that's, that's, means a lot to me. Yet his path to Athens was guided by his trust in his family. You know, Jen was nine months pregnant when I went on my first interview here, and when I came back up on the second interview, uh, Carter was three days old. Um, and, you know, she didn't get to come. You know, and she trusted me and said, I trust you. Uh, if you think we can do this, and if you think it's a place we want to live, we'll go. Trust is also an important component to being a coach. And for Tice, his team is another facet of his family. So I make my team. Uh, very familiar with what's going on in my family. Uh, you know, we've had some some tough things here and there, and some health health issues here and there, uh, and some stressful things come into to our family. And our, our team our team has been aware of all that. Uh, I make them aware of that because I want them to understand that you know there's reasons for everything. It's the players' experience at Ohio that matters most to Tice. The biggest thing I want our players to graduate with is a, is a phenomenal experience. You know, we sell it in recruiting as a, a terrific undergraduate experience here, something that you'll never forget, something that you'll be very proud of, something that you can be excellent at. The future may hold some changes for the head coach. I, I also have started working on a PhD, very slowly but surely. But one thing that won't change is the place that he and his family call home. There is no better place to have a, a you know, a toddler and a, and a young child in Athens. Welcome back to the show. I'm Grant Burkhart. In any sport, an athletic program is only as good as its alumni. And Ohio basketball is no different. Its history is extremely rich, and it has some of the men that we talked to last weekend to thank for that. A common theme in our interviews from last weekend's first annual Ohio basketball alumni reunion was family. And as you'll hear through their words, the bond they feel for each other is as strong as ever. It's incredible. Uh, probably about um, five, six years ago, we started, uh, when I moved to Indianapolis, getting a chance to come back here on campus and reconnecting with the program. And it's uh, just, a, there's a lot of guys here I haven't seen for 20 years. So it was incredible. Hey, remember, we used to have to run around this thing. Yeah, I know. Remember that? I remember Paul had a broken foot his senior year, and then he tried to come back the last day of conditioning. <laughs> no, we play together, laugh together, cry together. So we just done everything together. I think that's why another reason why we were so successful. But it's nice to get us all together in this uh, environment to bring back a lot of the great memories we had here and, uh, and give back to the school because the school was great to us. Brings, you know, we, sit, we can sit back and reminisce. And it's very an honor knowing that we had one of the most winning seasons in the 80s. So that's a, definitely a privilege and honor being able to come back and share with these guys. It's just a, it's a great moment. It's good to see some of the guys who, you know, played here before me and, you know, I, I've seen a few of them in the older books and it's, it feels good that they know me and <clears throat> I think that uh, I can feel the appreciation and the proudness of they appreciate how, you know, they played here. And You know, we'd like to consider ourselves a players program. 
And I think the greatest thing is it's offered guys an opportunity to come back. Many of them have said to me, boy, other than maybe a particular year or team being honored, that this is the first time there's been like a comprehensive reunion for all players. And, and just to see the different players from all the different eras uh, has been fascinating. I tell our guys all the time, it is a privilege to put on the green and white and to be a Bobcat. It's not entitlement. And it's, it's hard to do. That chemistry, if you could put it in a bottle, it'd be worth over a billion dollars. You could probably wipe out the national deficit with it, but we, we really are a special, unique group. But now, if you're new to the rivalry, or maybe you just don't understand what Saturday's game between Ohio and Marshall means to the two teams, maybe we can help you. For the Cats who've been on the field for the last two times the Herd has beat Ohio, they want this win so badly. And they want to bring the bell back to Athens. This is definitely our time to get this win. This game is a rivalry. We actually have, you know, something more to play for than just a game. We really want this game. They've, they've shut us down from getting a couple goals that we really wanted, and uh, we really just owe them one. We've been thinking about this game since the last time we played them, and uh, it's been in the back of our minds all offseason. As much as you want to take every game, the same way, there's kind of some that stick out a little more and that you think about a little more than that. For me, it was the Marshall game. So they're just standing in our way from, uh, from our undefeated season that we're looking to have this year. The battle for the bell is on, and it's time for you to rock Peden Stadium for Ohio and Marshall. But that's it for our program this week. I'm Grant Burkhart, and this has been another edition of the Bobcat Sports Showcase. Don't cut yourself. You might just bleed green. Enjoy the game.